Did I, should I walk out? Yeah. <laughs> this is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, AKA the Python Hyena, straight out of Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. And folks, I'm getting an applause here. Awesome. Here we are on July the 14th, 2022. And we have a comedian on today, an awesome comedian. We have, and he is just ducked out of sight. He's ducked out. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I got I got the ring light closer. That's why I did that. Okay. There you go. Folks, yeah. Roxanne is celebrating its 35th anniversary. No way. Yes. And we have one of the comedic geniuses from the film well. here tonight. Steve Mittelman. How do you do, hey, Steve? Hey, hey. I'm applauding myself. I'm used to an audience. You know? Well, you know what? It's funny because you're the third interview I've done from this film. Uh, uh, a few years ago, I had John Co Coppolo's on here. And what a great John. guy. Nice guy. Nice love guy. John. Yep. Yeah. And just uh, a mere days ago, I had... Um, oh, the cow. Is her name missing on me right now? She's not going to like that. <laughs> Oh, she will not like that. Okay. Uh, Sh Chandra Berry. No way. I had no her way. on. That's nice. Bravo. Hi, Chandra. Yeah, the, her name was just escaping me there. And it's like, because I remember she was so cool. The, her, uh, the, um, she had like a red, red and gray scarf on her head. And she had red brim glasses on. And she looked so cool. And oh, as opposed looked stunning. to her t-shirt. You know, I figured, ah, it's, you know, casual and, you know. Yeah, but it, it matches your hair. Uh, well, that's true. I Actually, I dyed my hair gray just to match the T-shirt. So. I thought you were going for the Steve Martin look. <laughs> that's right. Well, he had that for a long time. Uh, you know, I remember, I'm on tangent here. I go on a lot of tangents. But mm -hmm. I saw Steve Martin live twice. As opposed to dead? <laughs> yeah. As opposed to uh, not getting to see him, but I saw him twice, once in Miami and once in Vegas, and he had his gray hair, and uh, he the crazy, the crowd went nuts. I mean, so nuts. During Roxanne, as we talked about stand-up a lot, he and I, and uh, he just could not stand uh, just people screaming. He didn't, it was no challenge for him. He'd just go you know, hey, and people go nuts for a minute, and then he go, ho, oh, and people go nuts. For, you know, it was like the Beatles of comedy, you know, he, it was just nuts. So the adulation is fun to observe, and I just couldn't believe, but I understood what he said. I mean, I saw him live those two times, and just the crowd, just nuts, insane, and uh, that's all, that's all. Well, one of the things I like about Steve Martin is he can play the real zanny, wacky characters like in The Jerk, Navin Johnson from The Jerk. Or yeah. he could play somebody that's comedic, but rather the straight man in like planes, trains, and automobiles, you know? Tremendous. He's brilliant. He's bro That was a great film. I'll mm -hmm. tell you, I auditioned with or for for Uncle Buck with John Candy. And I was a fanatic, I still am, for uh, SCTV. And I told him, he couldn't have been nicer. And mm -hmm. I said, John, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm nuts. I'm, I, I was close at the time for many years with Andrea Martin. If she knew what a fanatic I was for, she would have gone like, oh, this guy's crazy. But she was very nice, a great friend. And um, so I told him the connection I had with, you know, with her and, and uh, I said, what a fanatic I was for SNL. And, and uh, I loved him and he goes, I'll do any character you want. And I went, oh my God, I don't know if you know the show that well, but w William B. Williams, you know, the sidekick on uh, the Bobby Bittman show. And he just, he went right into it for me. He, he would have done anything I wanted. I mean, it's crazy. Imagine no ego. You know, it's like I've heard John Candy is great. You know, I'm sad he's gone so soon, yeah. but oh, I've yeah. heard wonderful stuff. What a sweet uh, soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a 
this week. Yep. So, yeah, you still connected with Andrea Martin? Uh, well, if I want to, yes. I mean, we go to New York occasionally. I get to New York, and she lives there now, and she did very well on Broadway. And uh, I, I somehow, if I, I have to find it. And get her number, and uh, I know you're saying, "Hey, I got to get her on the show." You never know. Well, uh, you know what? I've had a uh, a few people from Black Christmas on here. Oh, you know, and it's interesting. She's in that. Oh, she is. Okay. Yeah, and I love Worth Winning. What an underrated film with Mark Herman. <laughs> You're like a filmologist. You're like a filmologist. Yeah, uh, like Step worth winning out. doesn't get talked about enough, but to me, that's to me is Mark Herman. <laughs> you're, you're, a cin- you're a cinephile. You're a cinephile. Oh yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah. All talented people, really talented people. Yeah. Uh, and I, I could probably track. We can talk off the air about. Sure, sure. Uh, But yeah, uh, she was, you couldn't find a more lovely soul. I mean, uh, and of course, Linda, uh, my girlfriend and I, with another very close friends, uh, we went to see uh, Steve and uh, Martin Short in Vegas. And I still am uh, friendly with uh, his assistant and, and, um, we hung out backstage for a good hour with them after the show. It was an amazing show. If they're ever in your town, whoever's listening to this, go see them. And uh, so, and of course, I've met Martin Short a few times, and there were always parties that we were invited to um, when I was, you know, close, close with uh, Andrea. And so I met almost everybody from SNL. I mean, but I can never go. Oh my God, I'm with everybody from SNL. I, it would just be too off-putting, I think. But I, I loved it. And Martin Short's a great guy. They're just so funny. I love the show Steve, he and Steve do together. And uh, I don't know if you saw it on Netflix, but they haven't on Netflix. I'm sure they've done, they've enough for more than, way more than one show of material. So uh, very talented. It just, it was great to be around that, you know? And of course, Steve is big into music now with the banjo oh, yeah. and stuff yeah. like um, yeah um, uh, some do that he did that during their show and also i saw him at the hollywood bowl do his bluegrass show mm-hmm. and uh amazing very funny uh they throws in a lot of material in the middle of his musical show and also i saw him one more time with martin short when martin short's uh book came out his autobiography came out he interviewed Martin, I mean, Martin Short, uh, and uh, that was hysterical. And at that point, I had no idea they had a show or they were developing a show together. It was very early on. So they got to, in essence, it was a Writers Guild event in in Los Angeles, and my friend took me to. And uh, anyway, yeah, there you go. This is very exciting. Roxanne celebrating 35 years and you showed something on here. Um, did you want to hold that up? We'll get you to hold it up again. But, oh my uh, God, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, look who's here. This is a uh, part of my wardrobe uh, on the show. That, by the way, they did give me a wardrobe, not only this, from the show, which is very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is my, uh, I, I don't, it barely, it doesn't really fit. Look, my head, not my ego, but my head mm-hmm. is too big for this. But uh, if there are collectors out there, I'm thinking about selling selling this uh, for a long time now because I don't obviously use it. And uh, I think it's a collector's item. Mm-hmm. And if anybody's interested, uh, they could email me at Steve Middleman, M-I-T-T-L-E-M-A-N-114 at gmail.com. I guess you can also put it in your show notes. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely be interested in selling that. And it was a lot of, lot of fun. I'm certainly the guy that wore it. I, I validate, uh, me <laughs> and that's mine. And it really was in the movie and, uh, wardrobe. I know people collect this stuff. I, I've had 35 years with it, so I, I can hand it on to the next person. And how uh, much would you uh, sell that for? 
I was told by somebody who is involved in this world, like it's been in the two to 3000 range. Wow. Yeah. So that it's a, you know, it's, it's a beloved hit film, you know, mm -hmm. it's a classic, it's a classic. So, uh, it's, you know, I, if I would be open to, you know, if, but I, I was told, uh, it was, it would be in that range. That's a, wow. That was somebody's educated, you know, opinion about it. Okay. So, wow. Yeah, it's not mine. Not my, I mean, I, I wouldn't have known, but I ran it by somebody. So. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Is that too much? I don't know. Well, <laughs> Know. you know what there's there's yeah. bound to be somebody out there and it's yes pleasure. rocks roxanne yeah. i wonder how much steve martin's nose in that film would be <laughs> that's funny well i don't know if there's any of those around but maybe maybe there are actually that would be funny uh you know i'll tell you one thing about his nose you know the bar scene where he does like the 20 jokes yep and we were surrounded by you know i don't we had like six comics generally around all the time and he he sat us down and said listen i'm looking for jokes i need jokes you know for the bar scene and you know we knew we were going to be part of the bar scene and uh and there you go we actually uh came up with a lot of good jokes a friend of mine named billy reback who uh, is a very funny comic and comedy writer for a very long time he actually came up with a joke that i gave I guess I gave him a few jokes and he used this one joke by my friend, Billy. Uh, it's, uh, it's my big line in the movie when he, uh, washes his, the, his face, he loses the bar of soap, you know? Uh, so that was my friend's joke. And, uh, and yeah, I think we gave him other jokes. I think I gave him another joke or two that was used, which is very fun, but that's, yeah, there you go. So, well, yeah, yeah. Well, before we talk more about Ro uh, Roxanne, I want to get some of your background and what led you to become a comic. Well, um, I think comedy uh, saved my life. Mm -hmm. You know, comedy, I was, I had a sense of humor. Uh, I had, I always found the irony in things and I had, uh, I had two very depressed parents um, and they were, you know, from the, you know, uh, between uh, children, the depression and the Holocaust, uh, you know, in World War II period, uh, they were, uh, but they loved to laugh as did my older brother and older sister. And I guess being the youngest, I, I did, I was funny. I think we were all funny. Uh, and uh, that's kind of, I think how I morphed into it. Uh, but I also, I was telling you uh, before we started taping, I love radio. I love, uh, I want to be a disc jockey as much as I love stand up. And I, I said, well, I'm going to go into stand up. And that's how it worked out after uh, two or three years of college university you know various universities and I, I settled on this and i did well and i i hit i hit my stride pretty fast as a writer and um about three or so years in i i i was at the copacabana there was a show on showtime it was a comedy competition called the big laugh off People can, that's what launched me. I beat Eddie Murphy, among others. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, I just, I had, uh, I was really, I had a great character. I, I sort of outgrew my character by the time Roxanne came along, but that's okay. I had a whole other career as an actor and did very well. I mean, I did numerous films and uh, sitcom appearances, never my own show, but uh, Larry Charles, who was uh, one of the producers on Seinfeld, uh, I met him. He actually named a show Middleman, but it was not about me. It was about uh, Newman, you know, the guy that played Newman. He wrote a show for him called Middleman, uh, and I read for it. I didn't get it, ironically, but I would have been playing me. 
uh, I wouldn't have. Uh, but uh, so uh, I'm not I'm not sure if I'm not. So I got into, you know, I got into stand up uh, okay. because I just loved it so much. I loved it. And uh, we were very fortunate that in those first few years, people just did it because they loved it. Uh, we didn't know that there was going to be a comedy boom in the 80s, which there was. And because of that comedy boom and all the clubs around the country, er almost every country, uh, they, you know, people started looking at comedians for acting parts, and, you know, and I was a real character. And uh, I think that's how it kind of morphed into, into, you know, Roxanne for me. I did 50 commercials uh, and I always had some visibility uh, you know, out there, you know, still, I still love it. I, I don't live in LA anymore, so I, I'm not doing it uh, acting, acting for a while now, but, uh, yeah, I did a lot. I did a lot. It all added up. Larry and Charles. I, I just looked him up and it's like, where do I know that name? Um, it, and it wasn't Seinfeld for me. It was Borat. Yeah. I love Borat. <laughs> I, love I Borat. interviewed, um, uh, the the female the the prostitute <laughs> oh she's funny she's, really she's funny. hilarious Lunuel yeah. Yeah. yeah um yeah. I had yeah. her on here for the anniversary of it last year yeah good I yep. love that movie great oh film. yeah so yeah. what comedians would uh, inspired you to get to stand uh, up I always loved the neurotic ones I loved uh, Rodney every all the oh comedy. I love Rodney. <laughs> Beloved, Rodney Dangerfield is beloved, uh, and uh, I have a story about him. We all, because he was so generous to the comics, he would, he was always looking for his no respect jokes, and I would never, I would write him up and he would never buy one from me, but once in a while, uh, I'd get a phone call from him and he'd say, well, I, I was trying out some jokes at the club, uh, usually Catch a Rising Star, the improv, and the comic said, oh, that's uh, one of Middleman's jokes. And uh, he'd say, is this your joke? And after trying for like a year of selling him jokes, I just said, just take it, just take it. Like there, there'd be um, comedy writing joke services that would sell jokes that basically they would go and steal jokes, like they'd watch me and the jokes that I had that fit Rodney, they pitch Rodney. You know, they had no conscience. And uh, it's crazy. But that's so I just gave him a, I gave him a joke. I think he used the joke. Uh, um, uh, I, I knew my mom didn't love me when I was born. I was breastfed through a straw. <laughs> yeah. and, Isn't it cool that he called you and asked you about it? Oh, he's a classic. You know, classy. yeah. I love the comics. But he used to pay fifty dollars back in the seventies and even early eighties. Fifty dollars for a joke was great. It was great. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was anyway. That's that. You know, it was, Rodney's great. So yeah, to answer your question, who did I love? I loved he. I loved Jackie Mason. Yeah. Uh, who I was close friends with uh, for a very long time. Um, I loved I loved all the neurotics. I loved Larry, although he didn't really do much stand up. Uh, I mean, I was friendly with him certainly when we when I started. He started a little before me. I love my friend John DeBellis, mm -hmm. uh, who I'm going to be doing a podcast with, uh, and I loved uh, Richard Lewis, who I became buddies with. Um, I loved Woody Allen growing up. Yeah, I like Woody Allen. Yeah, I, actually, I did uh, two weeks on radio days. I was in in the same year. I know. Put aside everything everybody thinks about Woody, or a lot of people do. Uh, but uh, in one year, I, I I worked nine days uh, with Woody Allen on on radio days. I'm just in it visually. They cut out a lot of what I did. Uh, I had a great role in there, and. I don't know, it's seven, eight months, nine months later, I did Roxanne. I mean, to work, it, in, if you were a comedian and you love stand-up, in one year, 
uh, I worked with Woody Allen and Steve Martin. You know, when you think about it, insane, insane. What I mean, was Woody Allen like? Uh, he was great. To me, he was great. Uh, I auditioned a few times. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you know Broadway Danny Rose. I uh, know that film, yeah. Yeah. So um, when I had like my second or third audition for, for Woody, I mean, it was really for him. I was very nervous about it, actually. Very nervous. Mm -hmm. I was in New York. I was packed up to move to LA and um, I didn't tell them I was moving to LA, but they said, oh, you live in the city, right? I go, yeah, I do. He says, well, we're starting on November 4th. I said, well, that's, that's a good omen. Uh, and because that's my birthday. And uh, I said, I'll have to start practicing my three S's. And he really laughed at that because that was an expression as Broadway Danny Rose uh, that he used in the, it was like a uh, strong style, small, uh, smile star or something like that, the three S's. And I said it and everybody laughed, you know, he laughed, you know, so I got Woody Allen laughing, you know, at something I said, and, uh, I had this great character, but they didn't make the final cut of the film, but I had a great character, Herbie Hansen. And, uh, so yeah, just, it was a hell of a year to work with both of them within one year. That was just insane, really great. And then with Steve Martin, uh, that was, you know, I think it was like eight or nine weeks we worked on uh, Roxanne. I mean, the, yeah, there was like a August, everybody was together in Nelson. And then September we were off. And then October we came back and they replicated Nelson in the film studio in Vancouver. So it's amazing wow. that they can rebuild a whole town. I, you just cannot believe what they can do. It's just amazing. So Yeah, I, I thought it was interesting because Steve Martin, of course, in the film, his character has this big nose. Yeah. And really, the, the screenplay didn't even need that, but I'm glad it had it. Well, but, but Steve was one of these guys in the film where uh, his character he realized he had a big nose but he didn't uh let that uh drag him down like he worked yeah. at the fire department he worked uh, uh he was well respected you know and uh he knew how to talk because obviously he's uh given love advice to somebody who can't talk to daryl hannah well he's he's sereno yeah he's sereno you know i have to tell you about daryl hannah she was remarkably sweet uh, mm -hmm. just a beautiful person you know uh and I remember the first time we did a read through uh, in the studio in LA and she's Daryl has, she's already a star star. Uh, and uh, she just goes, where'd you park? And of course she had a great, very close parking spot. She's Daryl Hannah. And she goes, yeah, I'll give you a lift to your car. I mean, this is Daryl Hannah going, hey, I'll give you a lift to your car is very sweet of her. And it said an awful lot about her. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty amazing. Well, I've interviewed John Cop uh, Coppolos. Um, yeah. And you said that you really liked him. And of course, oh, great. great guy. Yeah, yeah. I think so lovely. too. Yeah. And Chandra Berry, lovely woman. Yes. And she still looks great. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Good. Well, we show biz types. <laughs> well, um, she looks great yeah, yeah. I, I actually had a great time and developed a great friendship uh with uh, damon waynes okay uh, yeah Sam. so that was that was a really fun time michael and also the producer michael i was going to look it up and i forget it was uh dan dan something or other and michael he was the line producer and we became like buddies for a while while actually Invited him to my wedding, and uh, Michael. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just a minute. I I, I got the uh, the IMDb oh. on here, so yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Michael, it's Michael. I'm pretty sure Michael has to be Michael. Uh, Michael uh, Ratchmill. 
Yeah, Rackmail, Rackmail. Rackmail, okay. I hope, he's, I, I hope he's still alive. I don't know. He had me by a number of years, but mm -hmm. they said, oh, we want to dress you like Mike Rackmail dresses. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's like the inside stuff. Like, they, they thought it was so funny that my character uh, it was dressing like he was, you know, so... And of course, Fred Willard was in this as well. T Fred speaking guy. of a funny guy. Oh my God! And uh, yeah, he played the mayor, and uh, and he uh, was lovely, lovely to me. And uh, there was a great camaraderie. I don't know because I haven't been to on many films that were were you know for a a few months, uh, but you develop a quite a camaraderie because you're you're all out of town. And you're, um, it's just an amazing, you know, so I spent a good time with uh, Fred and his wife, Mary, but they both, you know, may they rest in peace and uh, lovely people. So I would see them in LA. I would bump into, definitely bump into Fred, you know, and we had mutual I think friends. Fred Willard to me is, <laughs> he is so funny every oh, time I God. see him. <laughs> in all the Christopher Guest movies, he's insanely funny. Mm -hmm. amazing, amazing improv talent you know yeah I would, I would bump into him it was very nice a great guy we had lots of mutual buddies yeah know? always loved fred willard was yeah. you at the premiere when this uh was released yes. oh yeah big time i i actually got interviewed on entertainment tonight literally on the red carpet and mm -hmm. uh uh i'll tell you about a story uh, about my parents being, because they were children of the depression, it's going to tie in. So of course when I was at the premiere, I was like the sixth lead in the movie. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was on the red carpet, you know, and, uh, um, so, uh, the next day that was maybe on like a Wednesday, the premiere. And uh, I forget where it was. Maybe it was a Groman's or something. And, Chinese theater, you know, the famous theater in LA. And um, so I get interviewed, I'm excited. I call my parents, they were in Florida, retired. Uh, and I go, uh, this is how my parents thought back then. Uh, and it's, it's funny and sad and poetic and whatever. But I call them up, I go, hey mom, hey dad, I'm, I, I'm in this hit film. It's got great reviews already. It's gonna be a hit. And, uh, you know, with who it's starring. And uh, um, I said, I was on Entertainment Tonight. They, they interviewed me last night at the premiere and um, it's, it's going to open up on Friday. And I, I swear to you, my dad says, I said, are, are you going to go see this weekend? He goes, we're going to wait for it to come to the Dollar Theater. <laughs> Like, that is so sick mentality. It's funny and ironic and sad, and and that and that's my parents. That those were my parents. So uh, the bottom line is, yes, I was at the premiere, and yes, it was an amazing experience. The one thing I had like seven or eight scenes where I had dialogue in the movie. Mm -hmm. They cut my dialogue in almost every scene mm -hmm. i had you know i had dialogue in the movie but so when you're watching a movie at the premiere and you're going oh my god they cut that oh my god they cut that oh my god mm -hmm. so you're watching differently but honestly they shoot let's say it's a two-hour movie they shoot like two and a half hours mm -hmm. and um, oh, hey, look who's look here. Look at this. Look who's here. Hi, Skittles. Hi, Skittles. Hi, Skittles. Hi, Skittles. Hi, Skittles. <laughs> Skittles is like, you're exploiting me. You're yeah, exploiting me for uh, hits. It's like, it's like that, that, uh, uh, Skittles has that, um, uh, like that character in the old, uh, cat commercials, you know, they, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name of the character, the cat. But, um, so, Point is, uh, Roxanne and uh, you, you, so you go to a premiere and you're, you go, oh my God, they cut all this stuff out, you know? 
I meant it, you know, throughout, but you mm -hmm. know, also it's like, I, I, I was watching going, oh my God, I, I cannot believe X, Y, and Z was cut from the film. But I was saying before, they shoot like a two and a half hour movie and, you know, it's, they cut it down to an hour, I mean, two hours. And I'm not the star of the film. It's all about their journey, really. Mm -hmm. It's about their journey. And the, the, the truth is, so if they cut out anybody after the two or three stars in the movie, that that's their logic. It's their journey of those characters. And that's okay. And that's how, you know, you learn. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. You know, they shoot and they overshoot. Uh, Fred Skepsi or Skepizi, whatever mm -hmm. you like, uh, was, you know, he was a big, he would like to shoot a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of angles, a lot of coverage. Um, I'm telling you, uh, uh, Steve wrote when, when he wasn't, uh, uh, when he wasn't uh, shooting, he was writing and rewriting. And they change the color in the script every time there's a new scene or new material. You get it, but it's got so there were like you know 15 different colors in that script. You'd get like oh here's the updates, here's the updates, here's the new script is, and you'd have like a script that you put together and it's you know like 15 different colors of the updated script. So it was kind of fascinating. The guy worked his butt off. Uh, he set quite an example too. He's a good guy. It's interesting too because you would uh, work in another Steve Martin movie, The Out of Towners, as well. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, it was fun. That was fun. Uh, it was. I'll tell you, it was. This was a, uh, a not. I don't know what you call it. Not awkward. Not sad. But disappointing because. So we were shooting and uh, I had a scene with uh, a scene with. Uh, Goldie Hawn, who was great. Everybody oh, loved love Goldie Hawn. She gave me some great advice and I took it and it made it a lot easier. Uh, so, uh, so I went for lunch and I was coming back for lunch and Steve had a friend of his that was in the same scene I was in on an airplane. And he goes, oh my God, we were looking for you to go to lunch with you. And it was like, well, I could have had a lunch, another meal with Steve, you know, I had sure I had meals during Roxanne with him, but it would have been nice. You know, it was like, it was like 15 years later, it would have been nice to spend some more time with him. But anyway, so that was what you call disappointing. Like, Hey, we were looking for you to have lunch and it just didn't happen. You know, say la vie. I love Goldie Hawn. Of course, John yeah. Cleese was in this as well. Great. I, I met him, had lunch with him with a bunch of comics in Vegas and he, was a great guy, is a great guy. So Did he do the silly walk? <laughs> no, no, no. He was, he was doing, a, uh, he was doing a, an event in Vegas. I mean, somebody said, hey, let's get, let's get uh, John Cleese. And he, you know, he was like doing a private, like corporate event. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody knew he was in town and we, I was working the improv there mm -hmm. and, um, uh, you know, it was like uh, Wendy Liebman and, and George uh, George Wallace, the comic, who's a very funny guy, is an old friend, and a few others. It was just great. So, yeah, he's a lovely guy. I'm dropping a lot of names here, but that was, <laughs> that was a great lunch. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the Out of Towners and uh, theaters when that came out, you know, and of yeah. course it's a remake of the Jack Lemmon, Sandy Dennis movie. Um, yep. Um, but I love Steve Martin and Goldie Hawn. Of course, we were in House Sitter together, you know, and and uh, and wonderful combination of uh, chemistry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about some of the other films. You did one called Beer. Yes, I did. That was in speaking. We're talking about Toronto. Uh, mm -hmm. That was with Patrick Kelly. Uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, who was a fan of mine. I did like seven commercials with him, uh, four of them for Federal Express. And he had me, uh, I, it was like a few days in my, in Toronto with him. He was, I was a funny character in a boardroom and uh, uh, 
Loretta Swift, Swift or Swit, mm -hmm. Swit uh, from Mash. She was in it and uh, very nice. And um, yeah, anyway, that was uh, that was Patrick Kelly. I I had a fan. So the first audition I ever had for a for a um, for a commercial, I was so bad. And this was like a you know Madison Avenue high rise advertising agency. And the casting director said, "Is this your first audition?" And then I literally landed my second audition. I went from that bad and that first audition to landing, and that was for FedEx. And I had the right look. I was very charactery, and uh, and 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 then that was Patrick Kelly who was the director, and he was like, "Wow, he's like, wow, I uh, I couldn't do any wrong by Patrick Kelly, you know." So it was really nice. It's nice to have directors who want to hire you and rehire you. That's very fortunate. You mentioned that uh, you met a lot of people from Saturday Night Live. Curious, did you ever meet John Belushi? Uh, no, but my friend was John Belushi. Uh, I meant to say SCTV back a few minutes ago, but SNL, yeah, I did meet people over the years, but uh, John Belushi used to come into, you know, I was used to be this close to John Belushi, meaning space, spatially. I mean, he'd be coming into Catch a Rising Star a lot, uh, and he was, they were all friends. And, uh, so, my friend Rob, who I grew up with, Rob Lipsky, he was his assistant, and he goes, and he, he really means it. He goes, I had no idea he was doing drugs. I mean, I go, how do you not know he was doing drugs? But anyway, uh, so I never met him, but I was like inches away from him. And I've interviewed three of the Blues Brothers band, I'll tell you. Oh, the yeah. steps they had to try to take to get him to keep people away from him that were dealing drugs to him and enabling him. Yeah. They were enabling. Yeah. Obviously addicted and uh, a brilliantly talented guy. So, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, I used to come in and hang out. I mean, a million people came, came to hang out at catch a rising star. You know, that's basically where I started catching the improv and the comic strip. So. Uh, what well, now I've met Dan Aykroyd whenever he uh, did a wine signing here and he signed oh. my blues brothers DVD. Oh, you ever meet Dan? No, but my friend wrote a movie that Dan co-starred in uh, called Diamonds, which mm -hmm. was uh, uh, my friend Alan, who is from Montreal, Alan Aaron Katz. Uh, and he wrote this movie and it was Kirk Douglas after he had his stroke, uh, you know, and he was like his comeback film. And uh, Dan Aykroyd was the co-star. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, so he, I, I don't know him, but I, I knew people that were very close with him at the time. So. What about uh, Chevy Chase? Chevy Chase used to come in to catch once in a while. Uh, I didn't know him. Uh, I, out of all his movies, I love the Fletch movies the best, I think. Uh, and um, I will tell you that Steve Martin is what he said, uh, the, uh, the three amigos. Mm -hmm. uh, he said he definitely had from all the gunfire, the blanks, you know, even though they're blanks, um, he had hearing damage from that. Imagine that, you know, you wonder why they pay a fortune to these stars. Uh -huh. They literally had uh, hearing damage. Uh, maybe it wasn't only just uh, Steve, but uh, I think he recovered from it. I hope he did, but mm -hmm. yeah, he had really bad hearing after, after doing that. What about Bill Murray? Uh, Bill Murray uh, may be my favorite out of all of uh, all of them. I, love him. I remember when Bill Murray, uh, when when Chevy left um, SNL, and Bill Murray showed up. I went, and this was he only did one year on SNL, as you probably know. Yeah, uh, and and Bill Murray came along and went, ah, he's not going to be that good. And of course, he was amazing, and you know. I was just uh, this affinity at the time for 
you know, Chevy Chase. I said, how do you, how are you going to fill Chevy Chase's shoes? And he's, mm-hmm. he certainly did, you know. Uh, yeah. Very talented guy. Really, he's got a great documentary on, on Netflix about how he shows up for, uh, uh, it's all about the, the, there's always a rumor that he would show up at somebody's wedding, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean yeah, I've seen stuff on that. Uh, it's a documentary. It's great. It's all about it. It's really he really does show up. He'll show up in a bar and start singing it. You know, it's a uh, you know uh, karaoke night or something. This endless stories where he just shows up, jumps into a party. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's great, and it really is. I'm I'm giving away the punchline there, but. They, they set it up well, like, is it a rumor? Does he really do this? And he really does, you know, show up. And it's Bill Murray, and he's a regular guy. And he knows people are uh, have this affinity for him. And, uh, you know, he's he's got this, he's a man of uh, sort of mystery, but they get rid of the mystery, but they show him at all these events all over the place. Well, it's interesting because they, they say that, getting hold of him is almost impossible i guess there's a certain number or something you get a call or something and uh they don't know whether he's going to show up to a movie until like for example meatballs which was his first starring role yeah. he just showed up what what uh, the day before or the day or something and just tore wow. the script up and just improvised you know that's incredible wow yeah, yeah. And, it was a, and it was a hit yep you know? yeah yeah Yep. I so saw, uh, I never saw that movie. Oh yeah, I like a lot of uh, the movies of all these comedians that we're mentioning. And you mentioned Eddie Murphy. You know, I mean, yeah. brilliant comedian. Very funny guy, and he was he was so. I worked with him at a place called Garvin's, and we shared a hotel room like a year before. So it was like 1979 or maybe early 1980, uh, and. I beat him in that contest. It was like October of 1980. And I'm telling you, while I was with him, he was like 19 years old, I guess. And his mantra was, I'm going to be a star in a year. I'm going to be a star in a year. I'm going to be a star in a year. I'm going to be a star in a year. And he was a star in a year. It was, he had such confidence. He was cocky and crazy charisma. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's true. I mean, he, was, he had the talent to back it up. So, yeah. And then you got uh, comedians with a little more controversy, like your, um, like um, your George Carlin or Richard Pryor, or Lenny Bruce. Love Carlin. When I won the laugh off, they flew out. Um, they flew out. Uh, Mark Schiff, who came in second, he's a good buddy to this day. Mm-hmm. Flew he and I out first class to LA to have, you know, meetings, so audition for the Tonight Show. And uh, I wasn't ready for the Tonight Show, but point is, across the aisle from us, maybe five seats over, is Richard Pryor. Oh, wow. (laughs) We're both nervous to go up to him. This was after he, you know, he had his thing where he lit himself on fire. (laughs) Yeah. Live in the Sunset Strip was his uh, one man show, uh, and it was, he mentions it in there. And and uh, we were too scared, and we drew kind of uh, straws or lots or something to figure out who was going to go over there and say hello to him. And I think I lost, so I had to go over and say hello to him. And he was he's like slept the whole flight. It was like oh my god, he saved me from uh, being nervous and fumbling and, uh, you know, anyway, but he's actually was supposed to be very kind to comics. You know, he used to hang out okay. at the comedy store a lot. I just never talked to him there, but he used to perform and try out material there. And uh, so, yeah, we were, we were there at the same time, numerous times. And um, a lot of times when people passed away, I do tribute interviews. And uh, yeah. I did one on Sam Kennison. His yeah, brother yeah. Bill was on here. And uh, yeah. love amazing. Sam. You ever, may, yeah. ever met Sam? Yeah, I was there at the comedy store. I was there while he was uh, on his skyrocket rise, you know. I mean, he was 
he was going on late and he just hooked in. My friend Tom Stern, who is a brilliant comic mind, uh, he said, uh, he said one thing about Sam Kennison is he actually doesn't care if the audience laughs at him or not. You know, or it looks that way. He said, you know, just, hey, I'm going to be me. And this is how who I am. And that's that, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty. Uh, he was a very talented guy. Sadly, drugs and alcohol didn't help for a chunk of his time here on the planet, too. You know? Yeah, I had his brother Bill on here and had a, a very enlightening um, uh, tribute interview on Sam. And it was yeah. pretty interesting, you know? But yeah. Sam didn't pull, didn't hold back, you know? I, I He just spoke his mind, and I love that about him, you know? I think it was brilliant that he in back to school which he was in with rodney dangerfield it was great he, yeah yeah it was one of my favorite scenes in the movie but here's a joke that a lot of people i don't think caught What's that? his character's name is professor professor turgenson and i'm like did anybody catch that that's the name of the george c scott character from dr strange love no that's great no that's, that's great. <laughs> I love Doctor Strange. Love that's so great. Yeah, it's I, almost I, like this is what the, uh, Doctor uh, Turgidson would be doing after the military, be teaching, oh, <laughs> and yeah. grow his hair out. <laughs> I, I absolutely uh, did not put that together. I didn't, and I'd seen Doctor Strange Love a few times. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah. very funny. I love it. Love yeah. It. So um, yeah, there was a, so many of them gone too. You know and. Uh, yeah, if you laugh, but but uh, absolutely. So uh, yeah, you you're in good company there, you know. Um, do you ever get to do the conventions? Uh, I have not done one yet. I would love to. If you know who books these things, I'd I'd love it. I'm full of stories. Obviously, you could tell. You know, I kind of little touch upon a few things, but uh, yeah, I have a. I wrote a list up of things uh for you know for this uh you know right here so mm -hmm. uh, yeah i mean it's it's just a lot of fun you know well I, it, yeah. it's it's interesting too yeah. because roxanne's celebrating its 35th anniversary i don't know why a comic con or something like they bring in people a lot yeah. of people from greece they bring a lot of people from animal house they bring people in from revenge of the nerds yeah. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, there's other movies out there that I think people will probably want to meet some of these people. Oh my God, I would, I would, I imagine there's got to be a lot of fans. When I, when I showed this before, you know, right here, this mm -hmm. sucker right here, uh, that, uh, yeah, I imagine that there's uh, lots of like people that are beloved, you know cinephile or fanatics cine fanatics i make up mm -hmm. a word uh about uh about roxanne you know it's it's such a sweet film and it's funny and it's got you know there's a little drama to it it's got a little of everything you know it's got a little of everything absolutely absolutely you ever see chandra berry anymore uh no because you know there's just Vegas, uh, Los Angeles is so so vast. You could easily. I I bumped into uh, Damon Wayans once. I bumped into his kids who were comedians and actors in the past, and everybody's very nice. But we were in the same restaurant. Uh, uh, you know, was, I bumped into his brother Keenan, who I started with in New York. Uh, so. You know, it's it's a small world and it's a giant, vast, humongous, endless world, Los Angeles, you know, and show business. You can mention a name like uh, you mentioned Dan Aykroyd, my friend wrote a movie was in, you know. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, you know, mention anybody, uh, but I can't say I bumped into her, you know, since the film, you know, it's mm -hmm. a long time. Yeah. You got a, a web a website that you want to plug on here where people can find you? Uh, well, you know, they if they find, if they need me for an event, I mean, I'm more like about that. I mean, 
Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Middleman, uh, Steve, M-I-T-T-L-E-M-A-N, 114 at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Repeat it again, Steve, M-I-T-T-L-E-M-A-N, 114 at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Two T's. And uh, that's the best way to get a hold of me. Just if you want to watch anything I've done, uh, it's so uh, mainly stand up, but some acting in there on, on YouTube, you know, a lot of YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of corporate events uh, and private parties uh, nationwide. I've done things internationally. I've done a few TV shows in England. Uh, and, you know, I've still stand up is, and I do a lot of auctions actually. People might want a celebrity or quasi celebrity auctioneer. So mm -hmm. in the last 15 years, I've been doing a bunch of auctions and I got really good at being an auctioneer. So, uh, it's there's a wide variety to what I do. So yeah, and I host events too. So yeah, it'd be interesting to to do a convention too. Yeah. Oh, they're a lot of fun, I'll tell you. They're a lot of fun. I just started doing them in 2017 and doing two this this October. So do you know Last House on the Left? You know the uh, the sci-fi movie? My friend, a good friend of mine is Mark Scheffler, who <laughs> Uh, yeah, a lot of the conventions. He's in and he Mark Scheffler. Yeah, he's been a guest on here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so funny. Wow. Uh, and I'm going to tell him now. He's uh, yeah, he's out of the country right now. But I've been in touch with him. We just we just uh, uh, we just did a WhatsApp last week, uh, uh, and uh, so he's he's out of the country for a few months, but. But yeah, uh, but he does a lot of, uh, you know, shows like yours. And uh, yeah, I'm glad it's a small world. I mean, he lives uh, like seven minutes away from where we are. We're like near Palm Springs. Oh, wow. I got to reach out to have him on again because uh, Last House on the Left is turning uh, 50 this year. Just like I just turned 50 on July 8th. So oh, happy congratulations. Yep. You and I think I, I think I heard from him on Facebook too on my birthday. So That's yeah, nice. he's, he's a funny guy. I, I like Mark Scheffler. Yeah. He's, he talks to me about, he does so many of these, uh, of these, it's so many interviews. So yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. I, I liked having him on and, uh, yeah. um, last house to the left is a way a little bit on the disturbing side, but, Oh my uh, God. I, I like him and the stories he told, you know, and <laughs> I saw him, uh, you know, I never saw the movie and he, he said, Oh, just, we tracked it down. Uh, my girlfriend and I watched it. It's pretty gruesome. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty, it seems pretty realistic and it's a low budget yet very realistic film, you know? Well, apparently it was Wes Craven's answer to Vietnam. Really? Yeah, that's what I've heard anyway. That's a story that I've heard go around. It launched him. It launched him. Mm hmm Okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. But do um, you got any charities that you want to uh, promote on here that you're... Uh... Well, it's funny because I've done a lot. <laughs> you know, as an auctioneer, I've done so many charities, uh, you know, and fundraisers. And, uh, don't, I don't have a specific one that, it, uh, it's very nice of you to ask. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm plant-based. Uh, so I'm, you know, uh, you know, whole food, plant-based, no oil. Uh, and, uh, uh, so anything that's for the planet, I'm, you know, not harming animals. Uh, I'm into people, I'm into the whole world being healthy. And I think that's the way to get there. Um, and, uh, so if I had a, uh, something like a celebrity thing that, that I am into, it's let's, let's be a healthy planet. Let's not harm any animals and let's all be healthy. You know, that's really what I'm about. I think if there's, there's 7.8 billion people on the planet, every one of us should be healthy. You know so, what? You mentioned yeah. you were you're an auctioneer on a lot of events. Um, since Mark Scheffler is out of the country, you know yeah. why he doesn't know won't hurt him. Yeah. You should auction him off right here. You know we could put that up, and when he gets back, you know. That's funny. 
Yeah, I've, I've auctioned off it, it, almost, I've actually auctioned off people, I've auctioned off human beings too at golf events. Are we going to, okay, let's auction off Mark Scheffler. Yeah, I'll, I'll auction off Mark. He, he, <laughs> would, he wouldn't mind. It'll be an inside joke, you know. I like Mark, yeah. <laughs> How much you give me from Mark Scheffler? Do you know Mark Scheffler from Last House of the Left? Okay. That's five thousand dollars. We'll start off. Let's go six. You know, Mark Scheffler for six thousand. That's a steal, folks. Let's go seven. Thank you very much. That's great. We'll go eight. Let's go nine. <laughs> and there you go. That's me auctioning off Mark. <laughs> Let's go ten. Ah, thank you. Okay. Who we'll go fifteen from Mark Scheffler? Fifteen from Mark. Yes. <laughs> He's a great cook. I'll tell you that. He's an amazing chef. He puts the chef in Scheffler actually so there you go. oh yeah i like him i think it's interesting that you and he are uh are friends and live quite close so yeah i gotta reach out and get him on here before the end of the year have him on uh, i have pleasant time talking to him I, and i'm still in touch with him on uh facebook you know um yeah he's, he's a great guy we're talking about he's very creative i know he's working on a book and i read a pilot that sort of overlaps to the the content of the book so uh he's a talented hard-working guy and uh steve's gonna auction that book off too <laughs> he says it's okay i will you know <laughs> but he wants to sell more than one that's the thing you, you know one of a kind is uh, different than uh you know that one thing about having a book uh Okay, if I want if I want to plug anything, I'm going to have books coming out. I don't know when, uh, but it's going to be called Leave Your Fat Behind, and it ties into the health uh, thing that I was talking about before. Mm -hmm. Seriously, Leave Your Fat Behind. Uh, so, And I don't have the website up yet, but I own the website. I own the domain, Leave okay. Your Fat Behind, <laughs> which is the idea of don't eat anything fat and don't get thin. There you go. Yeah. Well, hold that hat up here one more time so that people yeah, look at that. get get to look at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I won't put this on long. I don't want to stretch it, but uh, there you go. You're Nelson, From British Columbia Fire Department. By the way, Nelson, British Columbia, the people couldn't be nicer. Mm -hmm. What a sweet place. But yes, if you're interested in that hat, uh, by all means, Get in touch with me. Is, Absolutely. Is, is this on right now? Or being yep, taped? it's still on. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, is it uh, is this going out yet? When does this go out? Well, what's going to happen is go here's how I do this. Um, yeah. My former station manager, before she retired, she told me when I started doing this, said, don't put your interviews public right away. Save some for a rainy day. Yeah, And it f f turned out that COVID turned out to be the rainy day because yeah. when um, COVID happened and the station went into lockdown, yeah. I was lucky enough I had 150 some interviews in wow. my backlog. And I, I would put, I put so many out a month, Yeah, you know, but the ones that are out yet, I always they're on they're unlisted on YouTube, but I always send the link to the the person I've interviewed, and I allow them to post it. Okay. Yep. That way, you know, um, I can take my time with it and and release it because I like to release them in order that I did them. But yeah. I really understand what my because uh, I know podcasters right now that do this. And um, I, again, the, the, I'm not throwing shade at them, but they'll do interview after interview after interview, and it goes up with, right after they do it. And then they're busy looking for the next interview. And it's like, it doesn't give you a chance to enjoy yeah. what you've done, you know? Well, the interesting uh, thing, the one thing I would say about um, the time element, because it's the 35th anniversary, you may this may be like something you'd release in honor of the 35th year mm -hmm. on the time. I mean, to me, that makes sense, but yeah, okay. but I, you will get the, uh, you'll get the link before I put it public and you can put it up, 
put it up on your Facebook or wherever you want to put it, you know, so. Okay. Yeah, great. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Well, thank you for having me here. It's pretty amazing. You know, yeah, it was wonderful having you on here too. I remember you saying in the, the first uh, uh, contact, you saying, I don't know how much I got to share. I'd, I'd say we shared quite a bit. We did share quite a bit. I, you, know, you know, like the thing I said, where I said, I'm going to go on a lot of tangents. It's a lot of fun, you know? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm impressed. My memory was uh, on, on point today. Almost everybody I wanted to remember, I remembered, you know? Now, you mentioned, uh, I don't know if this was on uh, live on air or not, or, be, or beforehand, you mentioned Newfoundland. Was you at Newfoundland? Uh, I'd never been there, but I'd been uh, throughout a lot of Canada doing stand-up uh, over the decades, you know? Uh, and But no, I've been, uh, I, I think the furthest east uh, I had done was uh, Quebec, Quebec City was beautiful. Well, I thought it was interesting. Uh, you mentioned Newfie jokes, and you're the I think yeah, the yeah. first guest I ever uh, encountered that had mentioned that. That's funny. And I don't know how politically correct that is now, because uh, I mean, uh, Newfie okay. jokes have been around forever, but yeah, but I didn't do any, but I don't I don't know any, you know. I got a couple I'll share with you then. Okay. This is me making the comedian laugh. <laughs> Good. Now, there, you always get the three principal characters in a Newfie joke. Okay. You got the Englishman, the yeah. Frenchman, and the Newfie. Okay. Uh, the first joke here, the three of them go to a nightclub. Yeah. And they're getting, you know, they're getting plastered. They're having way too much to drink. Yeah. And the night's wearing on, and uh, they... The Englishman speaks up and says, you know what? We got to get out of here here at some point. You know, I'm getting pretty blaster, but you see that blonde over there? I'm taking her home with me. And the Frenchman's like, you'll never, you'll, she'll never go out with you. He said, you watch me. Now, of course, they're all drunk. But the, the Englishman saunters over. He, you could He's weavering a little bit, you know, but he makes it over and he taps a blonde on the shoulder. She turns around. He goes, tickle your ass with a feather. And she goes, what? He goes, particularly nasty weather. She smiles at him. She <laughs> takes his arm and they walk on out of there. Yeah. The Frenchman is amazed. And he's like, turns to the Newfie and says, if it works for him, it'll work for me. And he looks around, he spots this brunette. And he's like, I'm going after her. I'm going to use the same method. Now, he's had more to drink than the Englishman. But he's, you know, he's staggering a little bit, you know. But uh, he makes it over to her and he taps her on the shoulder. She turns around and he goes tickle your ass with a feather she looks at him for a second she goes what and he goes particularly nasty weather she looks at him for a second smiles slowly creases on her lips and then she takes hooks his arm and they walk on out of there well the newfies had the most to drink and he's barely holding himself up on the bar stool but he figures if it works for them work for him and he is you know he's like seeing bubbles around his head and whatnot but he fought this redhead and he falls off the ball bar stool and crawls gets up staggers falls but gets back up finally makes us over to the redhead and he taps her on the shoulder she turns around and he goes shove a feather up your ass she goes, what? <laughs> Fucking cold, isn't it? <laughs> very good. Very good. Yeah, very good. Very good. That's, there's a second one. There's a second one. Okay. There's a second one. Yeah. I, I, love, I always remembered that one. I heard that first in the 80s and uh, I always remembered that. I'm a comic, by the way, and I forget class, classic jokes. I hardly remember classic jokes. 
I remember that one. And uh, the next one, again, the three principal characters, yeah. Englishman, Frenchman, and Newfie. Always. And they are wandering in this like forbidden zone out in the middle of the forest, you know, and it's starting to get dark and they're lost, but they, they, they come across this shack or this house, this broken down house. And they've heard of this. They've heard legend of this house. Yeah. The Englishman says, this house is haunted. The Frenchman dares him to go in. Yeah. Dares him to go in this house. So the Englishman says, you're on. The Englishman enters the house. He's wandering around in there and he comes across this room and he sees a $10 bill on this table. He reaches out to grab it and he hears this voice saying, I'm the ghost of Anne Gable. That 10 bucks stays on the table. He panics and he bursts out the door of the back door and runs away, you know. The Frenchman, the newbie, haven't heard from him in about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. and They get a little concerned. So the Frenchman says to the newbie, wait here. He says, you come in if I don't come out. He says, I'm going to find the Englishman. So the Frenchman enters and wanders about the house. And he comes across that room, sees the $10. And he reaches out to pick it up. And again, the voice, I'm the, vo I'm the ghost of Ann Gable. That 10 bucks stays on the table. He panics and he jumps out a window and he runs away for his life. Well, you know, the Newfie's been waiting long enough. You know, he's got better things to do. So he's gonna go in there and find them, you know. He enters the shack, or the haunted house, if you will. He wanders around. He comes across the same room. He sees the $10. He reaches out, grabs it, picks it up, puts it in his wallet, puts his wallet in his pocket. He hears the voice. I'm the voice of Ann Gable. That 10 bucks stays on the table. The newfie says... I'm the ghost of Davy Crockett. That 10 bucks stays in my pocket. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I remember those two so well. And I, I like yeah. both of them. I like the fact one of them makes the newfie kind of a fool. And the second one makes the newfie kind of the smart one in a way. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah. for, us, for us, you know, in the United States, we had the Polish jokes, of course. You know, right? The Polish jokes. Yeah, share one. Uh, well, here's... Uh, Here's one, and I got to get going after the after this one. Uh, uh, so it's a very dry joke. I'll tell you ahead of time. It's a very dry joke. Okay. And uh, so this uh, this Frenchman, this Irishman, and this Polish man are driving in the country, and it's pouring a storm, and it's pouring, and uh, the car breaks down. And they uh, they walk about a mile. It's getting dark, and they, you know, they knock on this farmer's door and they say, "Listen, our car broke down a mile away. Uh, can we spend the night? And uh, you know, we'll we'll get help in the morning and be on our way." Farming go the the, uh, the farmer goes sure, of course. It's funny I said fireman because we were rock sanding. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Farmer goes, sure, just go to the barn, spend the night, and uh, that'll be fine, and then you'll be on your way in the morning. Great, thank you. So they go, you know, it's nighttime now, it's late at night, and uh, everybody's in the barn, and farmer's in the house, and there's a knock on the door. And the farmer goes to the door, and it's, it's the Polish guy. And uh, the farmer goes, what do you want? 
And the Polish guy goes, gee, I don't know. How come I'm first in this joke? Anyway, it's just like the newbie and the Polish guy, always third in the joke. <laughs> You're laughing now. How come I'm first in this joke? I have no idea what I, why I'm here, you know? <laughs> Anyway, I, I, wrote, okay. I, I, I wrote that. And you know why I wrote it? It was in response to the Polish guy always being last in the joke. The, you know, the, the, the Polish guy's always last, like the newfie, newfie guy. He goes, what am I doing here? I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm first, you know, anyway, that's all. Uh, but uh, uh, I know it's it's your show, and I'm saying goodbye. But I'm I'm going to get rolling here too. But well, you know what? I uh, know of um, some other podcasters that would probably love to have you on their show oh, as well. Thank you. Thanks a so lot. I, I, I'll, I will connect you with them, and um, yeah, yeah, and uh, and you can to hang with you. Yeah. You, you know what? Uh, you could further uh, see if you can find more people for that uh, hat as well. So it'll give you oh. more of an advantage. Oh, who knows? Yeah, I'd love it. So uh, by all means, I'm, I'm in, I love doing this. Like I said, my first love was radio and broadcasting. And uh, I, it, this is a blend of everything. So absolutely. Absolutely. Well, before I let you go, would you yeah. mind doing a plug for my show? By all means, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? Just state your name and say that we're celebrating the 35th anniversary of Roxanne. Great. And say you were listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Great. Can I open with that? Can yeah. I open with that? Hey, folks, you're listening to Greg Gilbert of Py uh, Python's Paradise. That's, I said that correct, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from Python's Paradise. Uh, it was a thrill being on the show. I'm Steve Middleman. I played Ralston in the movie Roxanne. And it was a thrill to be here. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Folks, check out Steve Middleman when he auctions off of Mark Scheffler. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to stick with that. Okay. Auctions off Mark Scheffler. <laughs> Mark of the thrill. So. Yeah, Mark, Mark doesn't even know about this yet. You know, we'll no, we'll I'm, keep it under our hat till it happens. <laughs> we'll keep it under. Uh, you can keep it under this hat if you want. By the there way. you go. Yeah. There you go. I will talk to you soon. Thank you. I will continue. I know I'm going to get rolling, but thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hey, it was an you. honor having you come on here. Thanks. Do I hit leave or do you hit leave or how do we do this? Do you hit leave? Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. God bless you. Delightful. Okay, bye bye.